We are back on Get Up, and Deshaun Watson has been just sensational this season. He's been able to do it primarily because he's been staying upright the last two weeks after getting sacked 18 times the first four weeks of the season. He will look to go sack-free for the third straight week when the Texans face the Colts in what is a huge game in that division this weekend. He's been facing a lot less pressure. Case in point, Watson's only been pressured six times a game in the last two weeks, and both of those have been decisive wins. In the first four weeks, he was pressured 14 times a game, and the Texans started 2-2. Two and two. So if you watch the show, you know that before the season, I picked Deshaun Watson to be my MVP. I love him, and I love seeing him playing without getting hit. It feels like on every other snap, let's take a closer look. He's the best quarterback in the NFL. When you give him protection, they gave up a boatload to get Laramie Tunsil, and this is finally beginning to pay off up front. Here's them against the Colts last season in the playoffs. Was not great. Four down linemen bringing the nickel back, bringing a linebacker. They ran this blitz a ton of times in that game. Deshaun Watson knew it. There's nowhere to go with the football, and guys are getting beat all over the place. He puts his back foot in the ground and is forced to step up, and lucky he didn't get hurt right there in that situation. Now they're playing the Chiefs last week. Similar blitz. Four down linemen are coming once again. Bringing a nickel back, bringing a linebacker. But this time, this revamped Houston Texan offense is playing much better. They're able to identify the blitz, pick up the pressure. This gives Deshaun Watson a clean pocket. It gives him time to look down the field, manipulate it, get to his check down on the outside. What turns what could have been a negative yardage play into an explosive gain for this Houston offense. And this is what you're going to get when you keep this guy upright, Greeny. He is so good. Led the leagues in sacks last year, last two weeks, like you said, zero sacks, Lewis. What are you seeing right now in Deshaun Watson, the evolution of yeah. this guy who we've, we've been watching him, so obviously, since his days at Clemson? And I think evolution is a great word because what's happening is you're seeing him be able to play faster in his mind, distribute the football quicker, and really he's helping to prevent the, some of these sacks now because of the fact that he's seeing things quicker and getting the ball out of his hands faster and let his, letting his playmakers work. Every quarterback knows that's the key to their longevity. Playing within rhythm, not taking unnecessary hits, and then letting their playmakers do the work for him. And he's doing that along with the fact that they have upgraded up front. Let me ask you this, and we had planned this question for now before we knew that Patrick Mahomes was going to get hurt last night, which feels like it slightly tilts it. But when we came into this season – it felt like Patriots and Chiefs were head and shoulders, the teams to beat in the AFC, and we figure out the rest. Patriots have held up their end. Chiefs, last two weeks, they've lost. Are the Texans right now the second best team in the AFC? I think they are. They're playing the Colts this week. That's going to be a de facto battle for the South. I think Deshaun Watson's going to have a heck of a game. He's going to play well enough for them to win, and they'll, they'll win because of him. He's been fantastic. They are the second look, best look, team. I, I, look, I think outside of New England, I think the AFC is wide open now. I think a lot of teams that you may have left for dead and said maybe they're a year or two away, if they can play a good brand of complimentary football, they can play control the clock type football, do the kind of things that New England does to the high-powered offenses. I think it's very much so leveled the playing field. You know, Kansas City was kind of like a unicorn on offense there for a while, and now they've come back down to earth, which I think bodes well for everyone else. Keep an eye on some of these teams that you thought weren't going to be players in the AFC, namely the Raiders. I'm telling you, keep an eye on them this week and see what they do against the Green Bay Packers. Everyone's, hey, everyone was act, reacting the same way when I talked about this in the preseason, Hembo. They were saying the same thing. They were saying the same thing over and over. They're the same old Raiders, the same old. Just watch. I'm telling you right <laughs> now. If, when Lewis Riddick speaks, just you watch. pay attention. I pay attention. Just watch. Okay, let's get to the big college games this weekend because we have really good <laughs> games. We run the option, and let's go to my favorite conference. Pivotal games in the Big Ten this weekend, starting with Ohio State and Northwestern. Bobby, what's your key to the game? Well, it's going to be feeding J.K. Dobbins right there, his ability to run the football over a Northwestern defense that's been playing pretty well. Justin Fields, they'll eventually wear them down green. And unfortunately for you, no matter how good your Wildcats defense is, they will not be able to do enough to possess the ball, and this is going to get bad early, and it's going to get bad often. All right, I'll have to ask someone to escort Bobby from the premises. <laughs> Next, Vilma, Wisconsin, taking on <laughs> Illinois. Yeah, it's a Heisman, hopefully Heisman Trophy front runner, Jonathan Taylor. It's all about him against Illinois. Illinois is not good at all, but Wisconsin can tune up because they have the Ohio State the following week. So this is a great tune-up game. It would be a trap game if Illinois were any better, but they're not. So Wisconsin get better on offense and defense executing. Get ready for Ohio State the following week. Finally, Sanchez, here's the monster game Saturday night. Michigan, Penn State, what are you watching for? You know, this was such high expectations for Michigan this year. I even picked them to challenge Ohio State in the Big Ten. Sorry, Bobby. 
it was just a rough start. They had a serious case of fumbleitis. They can't hold on to the ball. The halfback can't come over and block the cornerback. They have protection issues up front. And this kid, Sean Clifford from Penn State, he's getting better and better. As long as he gets the ball to number one, KJ Hamler, and their big tight end, 87, Fryermuth. He's going to have a heck of a day. We're going to see the best version of Michigan, but it's not going to be enough. You know what? You can't overstate. Let's talk about this game for a minute because I don't think you can overstate the implications of this game for both teams. Penn State is thinking national championship thoughts. Oh, yeah. They've got Ohio State looming out there and the rest of it. So it's obvious what's at stake for them. Yeah. For Michigan, this game feels like it means everything. They have Notre Dame the next week. They still have Ohio State out there. If they want to be taken even remotely seriously, they can make a huge statement tomorrow. They need to because they lose this game. Game, they're legitimately staring down an eight and five season. Yeah. Eight and five season for a, court, a coach that gets paid over seven million dollars a year. That is a recipe for someone getting fired. That's a recipe for starting over because this is his recruiting class, by the way. He's been there enough. There's no more of old players there. It's all him. And he recruited Shea Patterson to come in there. Yet the offensive coach, offensive mind Harbaugh, has struggled to get the offense going. That just doesn't resonate well for any Michigan fan. I, I don't even like doing this, but I turn to the Buckeye here. Bobby Carpenter <laughs> played at Ohio State. You'd host the talk show there in Columbus. How much are they enjoying in your hometown the way this thing is going for Harbaugh and Michigan? You know, I think people enjoy it when you win 10 games and then Ohio State gets to beat them at the end of the season. I didn't take any joy in watching them get bludgeoned by Wisconsin. And I'm not probably going to take any joy Saturday night watching them get bludgeoned by Penn State because that essentially eliminates them from the Big Ten East race. And that's it's always fun to have that last game of the season mean a ton. And if they lose this game, which they're probably going to, it's going to mean not nearly as much. Yeah. It, it really would take the wind out of their sails. And this was their chance. They get all their big games at home. So this is their big road game. If they're going to make a statement, that this is, this is it, Saturday. It's a monster yeah. game. I mean, the ramifications are overwhelming, and we will have it for you tomorrow night. This Big Ten matchup, Jim Harbaugh and number 16, Michigan.